then there's a whole slew of great event manager event management tools for WordPress, like Event Espresso, who's one of the sponsors here, awesome tool, um, Event Calendar for Eventbrite, a bunch of different tools that are out there. The problem with those tools, for my purposes, is that um, those tools are very one event specific. And what I mean by that is they are to WordPress. So if WordPress was a blog and is now CMS, most of the event managers that are out there for WordPress are like WordPress 2.5. They're very good at doing one thing in one event, right? But they're not necessarily an EMS or an event management system where you're gonna have lots of different tracks and lots of different event types that you're gonna have to manage and control. Okay, with all these different moving parts and pieces. Okay, so I then tried, so when I found out that none of the paid services were gonna work for me, I then went through all of the permutations that were out there for, um, for, um, for WordPress. And lots of really great stuff, but just not the kind of granularity and you know, blow it up and put it back together ability that I really needed. Um, so it became pretty clear that we were gonna have to build something ourselves. Um, and Kyle Knight, if you'll raise your hand, Kyle. Kyle um, came in and helped me on the project. And I had Kyle working away at uh, blowing up the Jet event system for BuddyPress and putting it back together. And uh, we, you know, it was a great start, but we realized pretty quickly that we, we were gonna have to do a lot, a lot of work to kind of bring it to where we needed to be. So, um, by the way, this is all about 12 weeks ago, okay, that this process started, which is important for you guys to realize as we, we walk through the rest of it. Um, not even quite 12 weeks ago, probably more like eight, right? So about eight weeks ago is when this process got started. And the reason I was in that place was I had a partner show that was developing something that they were, gonna, they were like, this is gonna work for you, we're gonna release it, we're gonna give it to you, you don't have to do anything. I was like, awesome. And about eight weeks ago, Kyle and I got a hold of that code and it did, was not awesome. <laughs> it was the opposite of awesome. And so we are suddenly in this place where we could not use this code and I have a show in eight weeks and holy crap, what am I gonna do? So that's when we decided to go down the jet, jet event system. And by the way, it's not me beating up on the jet event system. Jet event is great. Just didn't quite fit what we were gonna need to do and we were gonna have to pull it apart. So this is, an imp this is where the power of open source comes in for the small business owner. It applies also to developers and designers across the board. Because if you, how many people here are not PHP coders, but the designers trying to adapt, you know, trying to work inside the WordPress world. Show of hands. Okay, so you're not necessarily a hardcore PHP developer, but you, you know Photoshop inside and out, you can make something look sexy and awesome, but you can't necessarily immediately translate that into an application. Great, so this conversation applies to you too. So the, the first and most important skill you can have in this world is Google. And I don't use Google as a noun, I use it as a, as a verb. And, it, and, it's, and it's a skill, okay? You have to know, you have to think, uh, be able to take the component pieces of what you're trying to accomplish, find the great keywords, and then be able to spend some time turning through, digging up all the different things. What led me to what ultimately became Meetspace was a keyword search on Eventbrite, because I was already committed to the Eventbrite ticketing system. Um, Eventbrite, ticket, WordPress integration, those four words, four, sorry. I'm kind of sleep deprived so right now, so my counting skills are not, not as, not as uh, powerful as they should be. Um, so that led me to OpenCamp. Um, BuddyPress is the perfect tool for building a community before, after, and during a live event, almost. I kind of skipped ahead on my slides talking, so. BuddyPress is great. How many people do I need to explain BuddyPress? Just raise your hand if you're not familiar with it. Okay, so BuddyPress is, um, BuddyPress is, there's the Lord of the Rings map, geeky, geek alert. Um, BuddyPress is, um, it's a social network in a box that lays on top of WordPress, okay? One of, so it's very, you can have it, lots of themes out there that basically turn WordPress into looking just like Facebook. Okay, why is this important? For your brand, business owners, for your brand, the most important thing you can do in the new environment is establish a web community, okay? WordPress out of the box is, is one to many, okay? I'm the business owner, I wanna to talk to many people, 
I'm going to I want to put a community I want to put a message out to a whole big audience and it gives me a great deal of control on the one to many with me being the one and the many being my audience what you really want to do is build a community which is many to many around your product or your brand okay you want people to be talking about your product and your brand on your website there's just tons of research out there that will talk to you about how Twitter is you know how you have to be managing Twitter or you're frankly an idiot in this community because when people go out onto Twitter and say XYZ brand sucks and they don't pay attention to me and you don't hear it you got a problem okay so you want to try to control that as much as you can not just not from a not from a uh, Orwellian kind of I must control my message although there's some there's a lot, great deal of value there but you want to control the environment so or you want to have the environment there so that you build uh, a thousand raving fans if you're not familiar with a thousand raving fans Google it later it's a great small business strategy basic principle is all you really need is a thousand people who love your products and services the rest will take care of itself okay you need a thousand raving fans just Google that and you'll find scads of information on that on that principle that comes from the punk rock community I believe I think that's the origins of it you know people ask how can you know this random punk rock band in the middle of you know nowhere in New York have the you know basically make a living it's because they have a thousand people who think their music is awesome okay so if you're a small business owner that's what you're trying to accomplish BuddyPress will let you do that by turning your social turning your WordPress implementation and here's the beauty of it you have an, well, you, you have a WordPress site today okay and you're you know building your brand around the WordPress site and you're not ready to do BuddyPress no worries okay you keep working on WordPress you find somebody who can help you develop for BuddyPress you lay BuddyPress on top of it when you're ready and you turn on a social network on your site. They're not one or the other. BuddyPress is a set of plugins. It's a plugin that enables a bunch of other plugins to turn your network, to turn your WordPress site into a social network. Okay? So, everybody clear on BuddyPress? Any other questions there? Okay, cool. So, um, so I needed something that was BuddyPress aware, um, which incidentally, uh, our starting prop, uh, software wasn't um, but I needed something that I could grow with and I could very easily adapt so my search led me to open camp um, and I'll jump out of my presentation for a second <clears throat> I led me to open camp and um, it actually led me to a Mashable.com um, article on uh, a project that the guys at OpenCamp did using the Pods CMS. Um, <clears throat> and when I saw this, I knew I was home. This is uh, an application built on Pods, which is a WordPress plugin. Um, the pod CMS tool it's built on pods and it uh, and it was built specifically for and by the guys at open camp to manage their event system at their at open camp which is very similar to WordCamp just a but instead of being focused just on word it's got Drupal it's got a bunch of other stuff so they're not just WordPress so these guys built this thing they got written up I read through the article I reached out to Matthew McGarity also known as spam boy um, why I don't know because he doesn't spam people but he, maybe he likes spam He's the one of five people that love it um, and so I saw this and I'm like this is what I need and then this is where the power of the open source community comes in I sent him an email I said hey man love your work you're big in Tokyo let's work together so I asked him I said hey what's you know how is this working because I didn't know about it being on pods at the time he we talked um, he walked me through it. He told me about pods. I went and I researched pods, which is pods, P O D S C M S dot org, I believe. Um, I looked at pods of like this is kind of a, which I didn't know about at the time. Um, and so I checked out pods, and I got excited about um, the possibilities there because it's very extensible. I talked to Matthew. I said, here's what I want to do. Um, I want to install this. If you'll let us, you know, install it out of the box. Um, I want to install this and then I want to work with you to help me build it I will give this back to the community that's an important piece it's a very very important piece because if you go and you say hey I want to take all this awesome work that you developed and and worked hard on 
and your volunteers worked hard on. And I'm going to take it and I want to make it better and then I want to make it proprietary and hide it away, the pieces that I do. Because here's the model, right? This is open source. I can take it. I can do whatever I want with it. Okay? This is a big, big, big deal, big concept to get your head around, right? Is open source means I, the community owns the code. So I could take WordPress if I wanted to, just out of the box. I could strip all the branding off of it, call it, call it Doug's awesome CMS, right? And release it and sell it for $1,000 a seat. And I, you know what? I, I can tell you right now, I'd have takers, OK? People would be like, man, this thing's awesome. This is great, because there's a lot of people out there who don't know what the heck WordPress is. And I could make a living in a business just basically taking WordPress, slapping my own branding on it, and reselling it. Now, the WordPress community would rightly vilify me for that, if not hunt me down with pitchforks, right? So this would be the WordPress community. Oops, sorry. Um, I could do that. But what I did instead was that would be the WordPress community, hunting me down with pitchforks. Gaming miniatures, I told you, it would be a geek alert, right? So um, I could do that, but I won't. So I reached out to Scott and I said, I love what you guys are doing. I want to take it. I want to invest my money into building it, building the next layer of functionality on it. And when we're done, we'll give it away because the community needs it, okay? How many people have heard of Ning? Show of hands. Okay, cool. So I started out with Ning a while back. I thought Ning was gonna be the end all be all super panacea to my problem. It was a software, as, is a software as a solution on you know, community, completely white box community if you pay enough money for it. Um, and just a quick little horror story. I started out three years ago, second year of the show, built a Ning community, was just getting ready to launch it, make it public paid um, a developer in the Neen community to write a couple, or paid for a couple of his apps. And this is not an exaggeration for dramatic purposes. I bought them on a Friday, bought the apps on a Friday, installed them on my application, woke up on Saturday to brand them. That night, Ning made a policy decision that said they weren't gonna support that, that developer specifically, and it led to them stripping all third-party support out. So I literally spent about six or seven hundred dollars in applications, which I lost that day, because someone at Ning made a decision that they didn't like this guy. Okay, that Ning didn't pay me for my money, didn't, didn't give me my money back. The guy wouldn't, couldn't give me my money back. It wouldn't. Why would he? It wasn't his decision. I mean, it would have been nice if he had, but I was at the mercy of this third-party group. Okay. Now that being said, Ning has changed a lot. And this is not me beating up on Ning. Don't Ning fans don't come spamming me. But it's a problem, and particularly if you're someone who likes to control your environment, which I am, I don't want my business to be dependent on someone else's policy decisions that then bite me in the ass. Pardon my French, okay? Um, so so that's, where, that's what led us to where we are, we're at today. So <clears throat> I talked to Scott, or excuse me, I talked to Matthew. Matthew got together with Kyle and I and helped us put it together, get it installed in our system. Things were humming along, this is about three weeks ago, three or four weeks ago four weeks ago. Super excited. This is great. Put it all together. Put my team of, of uh, event managers on it to start plugging stuff into the system. Boom. First problem. Okay. The first problem was that that system was only built for one track to have one table of an event in a given track. Okay. Which is just fine for this kind of setting. But for a gaming convention, where you walk into a room that's 10,000 square feet, you have you know, 30 rounds, and every individual table is a different game, you know, not gonna work. So I talked with Matthew. Matthew was great, he was, gave us a lot of great advice. And he said, you should talk to Scott. Scott Kingsley Clark, uh, SKC Dev on Twitter. Um, and he's the developer of Pods. So I reached out to Scott, and I said, dude, I need some help, because my show, I'm literally pulling what little hair I have out left. I need, to, I need to get this up and running as quickly as I can. Uh, Scott came on board and immediately started working. And what I said to him, and what I suggest to those of you who are not developers, incidentally, I am a developer. I just don't develop very much anymore, because I'm much more of a project manager these days. And I, it's, it is 
counterproductive for me to get my hands into code every day because I will slow down guys who are smarter, better, and more excited about coding than I am. Okay, another key point for those of you guys who are moving into uh, production roles, I can jump in and ha lend a hand, but I just soon have Kyle or you know someone who's who who's passionate about that piece focus on that piece. So that's important. You know, the DIY is great, but it's not always the best business model. Okay, sometimes you got to hire the you know you got to hire the good people that know what they're doing and let them let them at it. Okay, so. Um, so I brought Scott on the team, and what I said is, I'm going to pay you to develop these pieces for me. When we're done, we're going to kick, we're going to kick them out to the community. So why did I do that? Okay, why did I do that? Those of you that are not familiar with the open source community and the WordPress community in general, you might be asking that question, and it's a legitimate question because you're the one that's investing the money. Why would I then give that away? What's the value in giving that code away? Okay, because it's it's counterintuitive to a lot of people who, who have, did not come up through the open source community, okay? Here is the value, and it's significant. Number one, you can set some direction. So if you wanna own a space, or you not necessarily own a space, but you wanna be part of deciding the direction of a space, in this case, an event management system, you can put forward the first pieces of technology and help set direction. There's a, an influence the growth of that. Big difference between control and influence, okay? What you should know is if you open source something, you put it out there, you are not going to control it, okay? At best, you can hope to influence it. The only way you're going to control it is if you're the only one who develops it and releases it, and then you're living, breathing, eating, and sleeping it, and probably not actually releasing anything, okay? Um, but you can influence it. So you can say, hey, I put this forward, and, and I want to help, I want to help this piece of the community grow, okay? The other reason is, once it's out there, and this is the huge power of WordPress in general, is now you have an army of people, if you have the right idea, you have an army of people developing for you for free, okay? Someone comes in, they find a bug in the software you released. They report it, it gets fixed, it's up there. You didn't have to pay for that revision cycle, okay? Okay, someone comes up with a cool new feature request. I think WordPress should make coffee. Great, I'm not gonna pay for it, because I think, you know, but he develop, someone develops the coffee, coffee press plugin, and it's laid on top of it. Suddenly, WordPress makes coffee. You didn't pay for it, you've got a piece of functionality that you can now use, okay? But the reason you, as a business owner, have to be prepared to do that and put those things forward is because the community of open source development is a meritocracy by and large, okay? You can talk a good game, but you need to deliver. Or people, you know, it's like that old Far Side cartoon where the guy's talking at the dog and he's going, Ginger, you're a bad dog, blah, and I'm, you know, and then they show the dog's perspective and it's like blah, 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 Ginger, blah, 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 Ginger. The open source community will quickly start doing that to you if you just make noise, but you don't produce, okay? And you can produce in lots of ways. You can be a developer who writes the code, you can be a, a UI designer that makes it look pretty. You can be a producer like me who kind of sets the table and goes and finds funding and resources to, to pay people to get things done. But you have to contribute, okay? So, but if you contribute, you will get back a lot more than you put in in the long run. Okay, does that make sense? I'm gonna stop here for a second, just ask some questions, and then we're gonna jump into the demo and I'll show you what Meet Spaces is. Yes, ma'am. A couple times you referred to pods. What exactly is that? Pods is a plugin for WordPress. Um, it's probably an acronym, but frankly, I had, haven't asked Scott what it means. But um, but it's um, this is going to be a little. It's going to stray down the geeky path for just a minute. Um, but basically, the way WordPress manages different types of information is they use a, a new development called custom post types, where you can set up like. Everything's a post, but then I can put some layers around the post. Like, I want this post to be an event, so it's got a date attached to it, it's got a bunch of different stuff attached to it. Um, but everything in the WordPress world goes into a post. Everything's, and, and conceptually, everything does kind of revolve around this one piece of information, a title, a description, and there's all this metadata that lays around it. That's the standard WordPress way of doing it, and it writes most of that data into one table, which is post meta, right? Somebody who's a developer can shake your head, say yes, I think it's post meta. Um, I know it is, I just, as I said, a little sleep deprived. Um, 
What Pods does is it actually takes those data, a lot of that data and puts it in its own set of WordPress tables, which, you know, I don't want to start a holy war about CPT versus Pods, but the idea is that Pods gives you two advantages. One, there's one discrete table that will hold all of your event data. So if I need to back that up or work on that data, I can. I don't need to go sort through rows and rows and rows of stuff in the post meta table, um, which is hugely useful and for me if I have to go edit like a member list, you know, and, and a whole bunch of details like Twitter addresses, if I have to do any kind of batch management, it makes it a lot easier to pull that out in one table, okay? You can do it the other way, but it's just, for me, it's the way I work. This is also, by the way, the beauty of the, of the open source community and the WordPress community in, in particular, is that it enables, because it is open source, it enables people to develop tools and resources that fit the way they work. Does that make sense? You're not shoved down a proprietary, this is the way it must work. In WordPress, there are, there's definitely an API, there's definitely specific ways that you're supposed to do things, but it's also an open garden. It's an open, I'm sorry, an open sandbox. It's not a walled garden. So you can get in and do things differently, and if it works, it works. And Pods is just one other way of doing, managing data. Does that make sense? Yeah. And building UI for that data. Okay, did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, other questions about general why open source and WordPress is good? Yes, sir. All your problems sound like database issues, you know, just managing your data. It doesn't seem like WordPress has any database tools or functionality or anything like that. No, WordPress does. Um, WordPress has, has um, there are lots of data management tools um, out there, but it, we're, I, I think probably the, the I'm not sure I'm understanding. Is it more of a statement like WordPress well, in doesn't? Other words, like file maker is my background. Sure. And anything you want to do can be done file maker with that. So why can't WordPress do that? Because the front end functionality of the database doesn't exist as I can see. So I'm kind of asking if you can if you know if something else or is there going to be. So it's place? it's it's built on top of MySQL. Um, so it has, I mean, basically, WordPress is a database. Um, just real, I mean, it basically is a front end to a database. Um, so, for example, another prominent blogging piece of software is uh, Movable Type, which actually writes a whole slew of HTML pages. So it's actually generating HTML pages, which there's an argument one way or the other to ask why that's good or not. But, um, but almost every modern blogging tool in CMS is built on top of a database. Almost always, it's MySQL or PostgreSQL. PostgreSQL. Um, but yeah, there, and so you can do conversions from FileMaker. The issue isn't the issue from a WordPress point of view is not that it can't be done. I don't want to make it seem like what I described can't be done um, in WordPress. It can, right? It can absolutely be done. It's just for me the way I like to work is I don't like to have to drill down into a table. So basically, the way custom post types works and post meta works is. If I have an event application that uses CPT, if I have um, a contact management tool that uses CPT, all that data lives in the same table. So my events, you know, unlike, you know, you got your peanut butter and my chocolate, which is a good thing, right? Everything's kind of in one place and you have to sift through all these different disparate pieces of information that don't make sense. Whereas what pods let you do is create discrete tables as you would do in, file, in FileMaker and then be able to manage those. And, and for that example, if you have a desktop application, you're managing a lot of data in FileMaker, you can then go get a tool. If you, if you have a pods app that mirrors that, it has those same tables in MySQL, you could get a tool conceivably. Uh, in fact, I'm sure there's gotta be one out there. I don't use FileMaker, but there's gotta be a FileMaker to MySQL converter. Someone in the audience might know of one, but there should be a way you can take your data directly from, my, from FileMaker to MySQL if you have a front end on the web and better yet, sync them. So does that answer your question? When you say database functionality, help me understand more specifically what you're looking for. I want to store data, I want to manage data, same way I do in FileMaker, but I want to do it in MySQL. When you say you want to store it, you want forms, you want like a custom front end where forms will push that in? Okay. The answer to that question is WordPress does that. So what I just described is, there's, but there's two kind of schools of thought about how it gets done. One is the custom post type management. By the way, I love coast, custom post types. This is not me beating up on custom post types. They're great for certain, in my opinion, for certain applications. 
okay? They're brilliant. But when you're getting into literally thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands potentially rows of data, and that's the way you have to think when you're building a community. Important part, if you're talking about building a community, it's not gonna be a little bit of data, okay? It's gonna be a ton of data over time, okay? Because everyone's, you know, I got a new cat, Twitter, all that stuff is all gonna be in there, and you're gonna need to manage it. How am I doing on time? 14 minutes left? Okay. So custom post types, is there a particular one? app, right? Is that what you're Custom talking? post types is part is native, it's part of WordPress. And then you can build specific applications to take advantage of that functionality. Now how right. do you get to that? How do you um get you, on the site and he wants to get this database transferred into that? How would he, he would have to write an application that takes advantage of the custom post types. So you have to pay someone to write the app. Yep. Okay. Right now, I mean but that's the beauty is, is somebody good who could write that app? There are tons of people that are there. There are probably 40 people at this conference alone that could write that out for them. It's absolutely important. Yeah. Anybody particularly standing out here today? Uh, you talk to anybody that's a developer. Just ask ask them if they you know if they do if they develop WordPress applications, they're going to know what CPT is and they can develop for it. And I, and I think I think it's Jake Spurlock um, who's here who who is, uh, who knows pods very well too. So he would be another he would be another guy to talk to about. So the two, one is custom post types, which is native, and then there's pods, and there are other tools out there, but the ones that I'm, the one I'm familiar with is pods, and pods um, has, sure pods, pods. That's yeah, podscms.org. And, but one thing that's really clear, one thing that needs to be very clear to everybody, right, is that we're talking about a tool set for developers. So pods is not gonna be off the shelf, here's an application, okay? It's gonna be a really cool tool set that will let you build cool applications like Meetspace, right? But it's a, but it's important. Here's the thing: it's important for you as a non-developer to understand the concepts and the terminology, like because you need to be able to communicate to your developer and know that you're not getting ripped off, okay? And you know, and so if someone says, "Well, I'm gonna," it's all ball bearings these days and Fetzer valves, you know, and they throw a bunch of terminology at you. It's important for you as a and, and 95 percent. 95, 99% of the WordPress community is upright, great people, one of the greatest communities I've ever been a part of, but you're always gonna get that 1% that are, I'm, I'm editing myself, I swear like a sailor, so I'm trying not to do that, <laughs> you know. But you get the point, not, not nice people, right? So you, it's important for you to understand conceptually the technology so that you can communicate it well and have a good relationship with your developer. And to, to introduce you to certain people that are pretty good at something, um, all you got to do, all you, the only thing you need to know is WordPress.org. Go there, create an account. There's a whole set of forums you can. Um, there's also jobs.wordpress.com. So yeah, you can go out. There's a huge community, and you know we can talk offline, and I'll be happy to point you some. And you, or you can catch me on Twitter and, or whatever, and I'll be happy to point you some specific resources. Does that answer your question? So you can absolutely do it. It's not that WordPress can't yeah, do it. You know, this is a brief top encounter. I'd like to, when I leave, be able to have sources. Yeah, by all means. Feel free to reach out to me, and I'll be happy to help you out. Yes, ma'am. Well, a lot of this doesn't make sense to me. Okay. So how would I know what I need if I don't understand like, any, of, any of this? Like, if, if I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm creating a blog or something, I don't know, website. How do I even know what I need to tell my developer if I don't know what I need to know that I don't know? Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> As, as convoluted as that is, I know exactly what you mean. Okay. Um, I know exactly what you mean. Okay. So the answer to that question is you already know what you need to know. Okay. You just don't know that you do. All right. No, seriously. I mean, here's the thing. You start talking about technology and people get freaked out. It's like, oh my God, it's the intertubes and they're going to jump out and bite me. And, you know, you know, and I don't mean that, I don't mean that to be disrespectful. I'm just, it's, a, it's an honest, common fear of people who aren't technology oriented. Right? So, but you already know what you need to know for your business. So it can be, and again, feel free to contact me offline. I'll be happy to help you out and give you some guidance. But really, all you need to do is set up a set of requirements. You need to say, okay, it can be as simple as this. I need an application. And oh, by the way, this is the beauty of the WordPress community. Probably, in most cases, a lot of things that you want to build already exist. And you're gonna pay a consultant to find the best of class application for what you need. Or they're gonna say, this thing exists, it does 85% of what you need, you're gonna pay me to build the 15% it doesn't have, which is a lot different than building it from scratch. 
Okay, so what you need to do basically is a requirements document that says, I need these five screens. I need a screen that says, hi, welcome to my website. Um, I want to buy your widget. And the widget has these attributes. You know, it's got a price, it's got a size, it's got a color, whatever. I'm describing a shopping cart. But you walk through the pieces of information that you need to collect, and then you have to describe what you want to do with it. Once they're done, I want to send them an automatic email, and I want to Twitter them, and I want to do these things. You know the business process. You just have to, and, if, and again, Google is your best tool set. Go Google business logic. That's a, that's a keyword that you can, your business logic. You can also, um, that's probably the best thing. You, know, uh, you, wanna, you are the, gonna be the person defining the business logic. That's the word, that's the catch word in development phase. So the, the programming logic is the ones and zeros and the coding and all the stuff. You didn't have to define the business logic, which is these are the pieces of information that I wanna capture, this is what I wanna do with it. So on and so forth. Make sense? Okay, so I can, yeah, I can just approach it from layman's terms. This is what I need to do. And then you'll want to you'll want to structure it, and, and, and a good developer will work with you on it. A good developer, that's a hallmark of a good developer, is they will say, they will sit and listen to you, and they'll come back and they'll give you a proposal that says, I think this is what you're looking for. This is what you're asking for. Is this right? And you'll step through a couple of process steps to get to the to get to the right thing before they start writing. Or in Kyle's case, I'll, th you know, I'll throw stuff at Kyle and be like, dude, I need to do this, and he'll be like, and he'll just start running. But that's a different aspect because I have development background, I can kind of point him in the right direction. And, and he, I was over a barrel, and I needed people to be developing against you know, my timeline, and I was prepared to pay for my mistake of not starting this project. Worst change your mind two days later, goes, no, 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 it's yeah. yeah, but, but and, th and that is a unique case. But the reason I bring my, my, this case and my problems with this to your attention is, I'm going to show you real quickly because we're running out of time. I'll show you Meet Spaces, and if, and it, or I'll show you it in in, in 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 an application. But we were able to accomplish some pretty freaking amazing stuff in a very short time because of the power of open source. What's that? Like literally, what you're about to see, um, the custom stuff that in there was in, had been there has been built in the last ten days. Now that also includes me sleeping four hours a night, but. Um, so I wouldn't recommend that because then you're punchy when you get up to do your work camp presentation. <laughs> but um, but uh, but the power is there, right? And if you have a longer time horizon and you get the concept of community and you get what you're contributing, you know the the value of giving something away and all that you get back, then then you're really down on the right path. And here's the th this is the key point before we do the demonstration: if you commit to the community, the community by and large will commit to you. Okay. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of power of that. How many people, by show of hands, grew up in rural communities? Okay. So if you grew up in a rural community, you know that neighbors take care of neighbors, right? Okay. If Mrs. Johnson from Weed Patch hasn't shown up to, shown up to the general store in a week and she's in her 80s, someone's going to go look after her, right? They're going to go make sure she's okay. Now, she may have just decided, I don't want to go to the general store but someone's gonna call on her and make sure she's okay. That's the power of community. I don't wanna get into a big whole social statement, but we've lost a lot of that <laughs> in, the, in, the, in, in the world these days. And one of the things that's really exciting and sexy to me about open source is that that spirit lives on in open source. The community takes care of one another. So there's a lot of power there for your business model. Support the community, the community will support you back. So let's jump into enter the pod people. That's uh, attack of the or, uh, pods. Thanks to Kyle Clark. Kyle, raise your hand again. Oh, Kyle. I, Kyle. See, there you go. Kyle Knight. Kyle Knight. I combined two developers' names, and I have a new developer. Um, uh, I told you I haven't been sleeping, so I, I'll come back to him when we're done. So uh, this is this is the NeonCon website. This is, see how, how awesomely cool and pretty this is? That's, this is WordPress. Totally custom, this is WordPress and BuddyPress. Totally custom skinned. Please don't hack my site. So this is the back end. We have, um, we have pods right here. Can't really see it. Okay, so we have pods here. What you see there is a giant list of data types, um, which don't be fright, frightened because you never touch those. That's that's the back end piece that we use to develop it. 
Yeah, each one of those is a different pod. So pod in pod terminology is a piece of data. It's a, it's a collection of data. Hmm? That's the beauty of pods. You can create any custom pod you want. You can collect any collection of data you want, and you can collect any pieces of data you want, and then you can tie them together and create relationships very easily. Okay? Um, then you have, uh, then our app is these two pieces. There's Creative View, and there's NeonCon. And then there's a plugin called Eventbrite. Okay? So the way, the way Meet Spaces is built is you create, um, a, you create a, an event, and in, in event manager terminology, what most people in the WordPress community consider an event is one event, like party at John's house, okay? Which is the after party to this show. No, I'm just kidding. Um, party at John's house, right? What I consider an event and what a large scale event manager considers an event is the overall event, which is WordCamp, okay? This right here is a session, not an event. Does that make sense conceptually? So, so you create an event called NeonCon, which has a whole bitch, bunch of different um, session types, and you create an event called Creative View, which is our conference track, which has a whole bunch of different uh, session types. And each of those session types have a whole bunch of different wrapping attributes that are different depending on what you're doing. Okay, and then you have Eventbrite, which is a plugin, which then lets you use Eventbrite.com as your ticketing system to collect money and, and, and sell your tickets through. And the vision for Meet Spaces down the road is that you'll have Eventbrite and a bunch of other plugins to handle your man your the financial piece of your your uh, your event. Okay, so that's the back end, and then this is what it looks like uh, in production. This is a live site. We're taking you know we're scheduling events now. This is a just so you know this is a WordPress BuddyPress site. Okay, doesn't look anything like vanilla WordPress at all. Completely custom, completely branded. Um, we've we've been very fortunate to have our site called out on BuddyPress a couple of times for, you know, that's a BuddyPress site. Look how gorgeous that is, what right? Is the, uh, exactly um, we'll talk about that offline. Um, uh, I'm, and I'm not really here to pitch NeonCon, although you're all welcome to come. Um, and so you have a, you can come into your ske our schedule, which I'll just show you really quickly because I'm getting the wrap it up signal and I don't want to be a problem more than many more than I usually am so here's create here's the creative view schedule coming up wait for it wait for it you see it looks a lot like the open camp schedule it's very similar in nature um, you go through here all the different events that are going on uh, you click on an event pops up there's a description of the event with a bunch of different data in it you can click here to buy now which then takes you to to event register to buy your ticket and then the other piece of it so this is very much like Open Camp. Then the other piece of it is this, which is our gaming piece, which is lots and lots and lots of nerdy, geeky games, which are awesome. But what the? That's weird. So this has a, that's I don't know why it's doing that. It's probably just because it's loading weird over the network. But but now you have all these rows and rows, and then sorts by different day breaks down, you can click on these, it'll bring up a, a detail of the game. You can sign up and register for the game. We can, we can assign track leaders and all kinds of cool information and data around gaming. The big key part about this and what makes Meet Spaces in interesting is that the gaming wrapper around the event, so every, every session has a time that it starts, a time that it ends, a room that it's in, the person leading it. There's this core piece of data that's just time, you know, time and space related. But then there's all these other pieces of data that are specific to a session type, whether it's a game, a presentation, a panel. And the power of this is as we release it and we go out and deal with Meet, and Meet Spaces grows, um, you will see more and more uh, custom types that the community will create. And that's, again, the beauty of it is we release it to the community. There are lots of smart people that are going to take the technology we release and they're going to do more cool stuff with it than we could ever think of ourselves. And then we're going to get the benefit of that. Does that make sense? So in a year, I'll be talking about, look at these crazy awesome things that people did with Meet Spaces, right? So that's my presentation in a nutshell. I hope it was useful and um, useful to you. If you have any questions, feel free to, to catch me offline. Um, you can, the easiest way to get hold of me is on the Twitters, at, at Doug Dalton. Um, you can also catch me at, at NeonCon, but that's, that's my professional Twitter. 
Um, I invite you to check out meetspaces.org. It is just a landing page right now because literally we just launched it yesterday. Um, but if you go to meetspaces.org slash dev, that's our P2 dev blog where we'll, you know, we'll be making updates about what, what's going on with it. Um, you check out Pod CMS. Um, there is a ticket tracker, so if you have ideas for Meetspace, you can put in, hey, here's a feature request for something cool for Meetspaces. Um, and then my URL is dougdalton.com, neoncon.com, pixelcore.com. And then my email is right here. It's uh, ddalton at pixelcore.com. So I hope that was useful.